Namen deinerseits. Let's open with prayer. Lass uns mit Gebet anfangen. Dear Heavenly Father, Vater, we thank you that we can come again and to open your word. Danken dir, dass wir uns ein weiteres Mal versammeln können, um dein Wort zu öffnen. So thank you for your many blessings throughout the day. Danke auch für deine vielen Segnungen während des Tages. Please forgive us our sins and our shortcomings. Bitte vergib uns unsere Sünden und unser zu kurz kommen. And please bless us now with your presence. Und bitte segne uns jetzt mit deiner Gegenwart. Open your word up to our understanding. Öffne uns dein Wort, uh, unserem Verständnis. And help us to receive it with joy and gladness. Und hilf uns, das mit Freude und Frohlocken zu empfangen. We would understand it and be able to remember it. Und dass wir es verstehen mögen und auch in der Lage sein mögen, es zu behalten. And it would do its work of sanctifying us. Und dass es das Werk äh, das der Heiligung in uns tun möge. That it would bring conviction to our hearts. Und dass es auch Überführung zu unserem Herzen bringt. Please bless my brother Lawrence as he leads the class. Bitte segne mein Bruder Lorenz, wenn er die Klasse anleitet. Put your words in his mouth. Lege deine Worte in seinen Mund. Please bless the technic and all those who are watching over the live stream and the recordings. Und bitte segne auch die Technik und den Livestream und alle, die auch die Aufzeichnungen anschauen. And please bless us here. Und bitte segne uns auch hier. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Und wir danken dafür in Jesu Namen. Amen. Amen. Okay, so there are no uh, set notes tonight. So, es gibt keine äh, beschriebenen Notizen heute Abend. So, therefore, you please take your Bibles. Okay. So, wir brauchen unsere Bibel. So, let's go to Genesis 28. Und wir gehen zu 1. Buch Mose 28. Und wir fangen in Vers 10 an. Es heißt, And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night, because the sun was set. And he took off the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth. And the top of it, it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above, above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land wherein thou liest to thee will I give it and to thy seed. Okay. It's first right. So, what did Jacob receive here? So, what had Jacob here erhalten? Same as Daniel, Daniel 1, verse 17. Yes, exactly. Daniel, Daniel 1, verse 17. Received so, the ability to have dreams and visions. Yes, yeah. He den Fähigkeit, Träume und Visionen zu haben. Exactly, so he saw this ladder reaching up to heaven. So, right? er hat diesen Leiter, der bis auf den, in den Himmel hinein reichte, gesehen. And um, on the top of it, who was standing there? Und wer stand da oben? Christ. Right? Christus. So he saw Christ, he had the revelation. Right? Er Christus gesehen, er hat die Offenbarung gehabt. Okay, and the angels were ascending and descending on this ladder. Und die Engel, sie gingen auf und ab auf diesen Leiter. Alright, and, <coughs> and keep your finger here. So, halte den Platz hier. Let's go to 2 Peter, chapter 1. 2 Petrus, Kapitel 1. We understand that this is what Peter here sees or describes is the same as what Jacob saw, right? Und das, was Petrus hier beschreibt, ist dasselbe wie das, was Jakob sah. Because Ellen White calls it the Peter's letter, right? Denn Ellen White nennt es uh, Petrus' letter. Okay, so let's uh, read verses 4 
8. It says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you, and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, <clears throat> so... Um, how many steps? So, how many steps? Eight. Eight. Yes, and the revelation is in here, right? And the offenbarung is here drin. Eight. eight is a symbol of the birth. Exactly. And eight is also a symbol for the birth. So here you have eight steps. So es gibt acht Schritten. Yes. So basically, you climb from earth to heaven. heaven so in right? Grunde, du erklimmst vom Erde zum Himmel hinauf. So here is earth. So here is the Erde. And here is heaven. And there is the Himmel. And also the, the counterfeit tries to do exactly the same. Build their towers right up to heaven. Right? Yes, but they already do that at the beginning, right? But yes. I mean, also the I mean they, 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 they basically provide a false way to heaven. Yeah, you know. So you yes. beaten a false way to the Himmel. Mm -hmm. There. Yeah, it's interesting. You've asked him. So in the first scene is like this. Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your call and allow you sure for if you do these things you shall never fall. Because this marks the falling away there. Also first scene is like when you these Sachen tut, then werd ihr nie fallen. And das macht das wegfallen here. Marks. Markiert. Macht. Marks, I said, that's right. Markiert, das wegfallen. Yes, exactly. So, right, so therefore this is this experience where go from earth to heaven. So right? this is the Erfahrung, wo du vom Erde zum Himmel And hinüber then you bist. become this church in heaven, as we understand, come up hither like the two witnesses. Und dann right? wirst du diese um, Gemeinde im Himmel sein, so wie wir das verstehen. Also kommt hier herauf, wie er sagt zu den zwei Zeugen. Okay, so now let's go to 2 Corinthians. So, lasst uns jetzt zu 2. Korinther gehen. Chapter 29. I doubt it. The uh, Chronicles, sorry. Also, zweite Chronik, Kapitel 29. That was my fault, I said Corinthians. Second Chronicles, 29. Zweite Chronik, 29. And uh, this is something we looked at in the past. Many times, okay. Und das ist eine Sache, die wir öfters in der Vergangenheit, äh, in der Vergangenheit bereits angeschaut haben. And that's not a thought, and I'm still open to it, but I think it's valid, okay. Und das ist noch eine Gedanke. Ich bin noch dazu offen, aber ich glaube, dass diese Gedanke gültig ist. So let's read verses 15 to 17. Und wir lesen die Versen 15 bis 17. And this is where Hezekiah wanted to cleanse the temple. Und hier okay. ist es, wo Hezekiah den Tempel selbst reinigen wollen. Okay, and according to the line of Christ, what is this way mark? Und gemäß der Linie von Christi, was ist diese Wegmarke hier? Ja, yeah, the first temple cleansing. So, right. das ist Tempel reinigen. Okay. Also, it depends which okay. after Friday you use it. Okay. So, first temple cleansing. So, der erste Tempel reinigen. Okay, so, and he cleanses the temple until he says it is finished or it is done. Und right? er reinigt den Tempel bis er sagt es ist um, vollendet oder es ist getan. Right. Es ist vollbracht. So yeah. for the first group the temple is cleansed. Here. Und für die erste Gruppe der Tempel ist eben hier an dieser Wegmarke gereinigt. Right. For the second it's here. Und für der zweite dann eben hier. So now let's read these verses, uh, 15 to 17. So the verse 15 to 17. And they gathered their brethren and sanctified themselves and came according to the commandment of the king by the words of the Lord to cleanse the house of the Lord. And the priests went into the inner part of the house of the Lord to cleanse it and brought out all the uncleanness that they found in the temple of the Lord into the court of the house of the Lord. 
and the Levites took it to carry it out abroad into the brook, brook Kidron. Now they began on the first day of the first month to sanctify, and on the eighth day of the month came they to the porch of the Lord. So they sanctified the house of the Lord in eight days, and, a, and in the sixteenth day of the first month they made an end. Okay, so how many days in total did they cleanse? So, how many days in total did they cleanse? 16 days, right? 16 Tage. But it was divided into 8 and 8. Aber right? es war verteilt in 8 Tage und 8 Tage. And they started on the first day of the first month. Und right? sie fingen am ersten Tag des ersten Monats an. And we understand the first day of the first month in Middleite time is also here, right? Und wir verstehen in der Mittelgeschichte der ersten Tag des ersten Monats ist auch hier. So parallel to the beginning of the temple cleansing. Mm -hmm. ah. So parallel zum Anfang vom Tempel war So and then cleanse eight days and it brings you to where? Und dann acht Tage lang wird gereinigt und das bringt dich wohin? What does it say? Was sagt es hier in dem Vers? And they came to the? Sie kamen. Yeah. Verse 17. Vers 17. Now they began on the first day of the first month to sanctify and on the eighth day of the month oh. came they to the porch. Sie yes. kamen zum Säulenhalle. Okay, and who was in the porch? Und wer war am Säulenhalle? Isaiah. Jesaja. In Isaiah chapter Jesaja, six, right? six. So when he had the revelation. So da, wo er die Offenbarung erhielt. So and the, when they came to the porch, how many days did they continue cleansing? So und als sie zum Säulenhalle kamen, wie viele Tage führen sie fort zu reinigen? Eight days, right? Entschuldigung, <coughs> acht Tage weiter. So and it led them then to the. Und das führte sie dann zu. First day, yes, first day, sixteenth day of the first month. Der sechzehnte right? Tag des ersten Monats. Okay, so. Uh, I don't know, I need to look at this. Uh, this was the porch of Solomon's temple. Um, I, I need to look, look at this. I, but was most likely here. You know? I mean, when he healed people, that's where he heals you. Right? So, Jesus war auch am Säulenhalle von Salomos Tempel angekommen, wo er geheilt hat. Das muss man noch anschauen, aber wo er geheilt hat, ist höchstwahrscheinlich auch hier, weil es ist hierin, wo wir geheilt werden. Okay, so the 16th day of the first month is first fruits, right? 16. Tag des ersten Monats ist Erstlingsfrüchten. So basically you have eight days from here to here. So es gibt acht Tage von hier bis hier. And then you have here these other eight days from here to here. Und dann gibt es diese weitere acht Tage von hier bis hier. Would also be Yeah, for the other group. Also, es würde dann auch von hier bis da für den anderen Gruppe sein. Right. But uh, I mean, it says here it's first fruits, right? Aber es sagt hier, es ist Erstlingsfrüchten. And who are the first fruits? Und wer sind die Erstlingsfrüchte? Yeah, 144,000. Yes. Also der 144,000. Yes, but also in, in one illustration, it's the special resurrection. Aber right? in einer Darstellung ist es auch die besondere Auferstehung. Yeah, because you have the first harvest and then the Second harvest, right? The general. The first and then the general harvest. Okay. In that case, maybe it doesn't only refer to the. So in this case, maybe this eight eight days are only here drawn and not to the rest. Okay. So yeah. Therefore, these uh, eight days and eight days and. Um, so these eight and eight days. Uh, what was my thought? Uh, also, what's nice is the sixteenth day of the first month. Was the third day? Yes. Because Christ has tear down his mm. temple and the three days are raised up. The third day was the sixteenth day of the first month. So, sechzehnte yes. Tag des ersten Monats war der dritte Tag, weil Christus hat gesagt, reiße diese Tempel nieder und in drei Tage werde ich sie aufreißen. Und der dritte Tag war der sechzehnte. And yes. it's also the day the Red Sea parted. Und es ist mm. auch denselben Tag, an dem der rote Meer sich teilte. Yes. So. <coughs> Right, and um, okay, so come from the middle. Sorry, Matthew. No, it doesn't matter. It's, uh, the Lord will help. Is that it? Um, 
Yes, I mean, let's go then to Isaiah 6. Okay. So, lesson to Isaiah 6 again. The work of Colin. to Isaiah 6. So we begin yet to Isaiah 6. And um, let's just begin in verse 1. Und fangen wir in Vers 1 an. It says, in the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up in his train, filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Ah, now I remember what I want to say. So, uh, so basically, yeah, you have eight days and eight days. So right? you have eight days and eight days. Okay, so in the chose, it's both illustrating a work of cleansing, right? In, in what, sorry? It both illustrates a work so of cleansing. So you have both stellen a work of cleansing. So, cleansing here. It's got a cleansing here. It's like a cleansing score. A cleansing here. And also a cleansing in this time. And what would be the illustration of the cleansing here? And what would be the illustration of the cleansing here? The filthy garments. Yes. But what, what uh, ritual or foot washing? Foot washing. Also yes. the foot washing. Okay, so here you have the, the foot washing. So here has to the foot washing. Because what did Jesus say? You're not all clean. Yeah, okay, let's uh, just keep your finger here in Isaiah. You're all clean, but one or something like that. Uh, let's go to John chapter 13, I think it is. So, halte den Platz in Isaiah, geht zum Johannes 13. And let's begin in verse 4. Wir fangen in Vers 4. And we will read down to verse 10. Die Verse 4 bis 10. It says, He riseth, riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that he poureth water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter and Peter saith unto him, Lord, Dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, what I, do thou, what I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith unto him, he that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. Okay, so according to verse 10, what does Jesus say here? So, in verse 10, what does Jesus say here? He says, you're all clean, but one. Yes. You're clean, but not quite. Yes, in a sense, uh, you are already washed. So, okay. In that sense, you are already washed. But you need to have this special washing now here at the end. Right? Because it says, uh, Jesus said unto him, he, he that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. You are clean, but not all. So when you come here, so, uh, when you receive this cleansing, mm -hmm. he regards you as clean. Okay? When you this reinigung erhalten hast and you here ankommst, Jesus betrachtet dich as you're, rein. You're like Zacchaeus. Because he looked at Zacchaeus and he was looking for fruit. And the fruit is in the bud. So it says in John 15, if you don't bring forth fruit, it doesn't regard you as his. He casts you away. But if there's fruit, he now urges you. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. 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 Wie in den Fall von Zacchaeus. Jesus hat hier yes. angeschaut, ob er nun Frucht hat. Und der Frucht kann in der Knospe gesehen werden oder in den Halm gesehen werden. Und wenn du hier ankommst ohne Frucht, du wirst... Ähm, ins Feuer geworfen. Wenn du aber hier mit Frucht kommst, dann ähm, reinigt er dich oder er beschneidet dich, 
so dass du dann noch mehr Frucht hervorbringen kannst. Exactly. Yeah. Because so you come here, yeah, and you basically clean up to everything you could have able to do. Yeah, able to do so. up to this time. Du kommst yeah. hier an yes. und du bist zwar rein gemäß alles was dir ähm, in deiner Macht stand zu tun. So that's a, a washing we saw here. Okay. Das ist eine Waschung oder eine Reinigung. Yeah. But what does the Lord do in here? Aber was tut der Herr hier? What does Sister White say? What is righteousness or justification by faith? Was sagt Ellen White? Was ist Rechtfertigung durch Glauben? It does a work for you that you are not able to do. Yes. Er tut das für dich, was du für dich selbst nicht tun kannst. Die Ehre oder die Herrlichkeit eines Mannes in den Staub zu legen. Und deswegen jeder wird in diese Erfahrung hier yeah. im Staub gedemütigt werden. And White says, uh, what was revealed to Isaiah? Und Ellen White hat gesagt, was ist denn Jesaja geoffenbart worden? Not yeah. known before. Yes. The hidden evil, right? So, diese verborgene Böse. Okay, so only the revelation can show you these things. That's like a special cleansing he does here at the end for you. Okay. Nur die Offenbarung kann diese Sachen dir eben offenbaren. Das ist wie eine spezielle Reinigung, die er für dich hier am Ende tut. So, I just write here then fully clean. Okay. Ich schreibe den hier vollständig rein. Okay. So, my question is... Is it the same like Jesus was saying to the... This resurrection he only can do. Yes. Yes. Das wäre dann ähm, richtig in dem Fall, dass die Auferstehung ist nur das, was Jesus tun kann. And with a stone rolling away, maybe you're right. Okay. Also mit dem Stein wegrollen von den Grab Lazarus, vielleicht he hast du recht. Then, to a stone. Yes, yes, yes. I mean the principle is definitely. Yes. Uh, also das Prinzip ist auf jeden Fall da. Okay. But maybe it means something more than this. Okay, in this illustration. Okay. Vielleicht in dieser Darstellung bedeutet das mehr als nur das. Okay, so, um, and you, Mark, referred already to uh, John 15, so let's go to John 15. Und wir haben Johannes 15 erwähnt gehabt, also lass uns jetzt dahin. Because that's the, it's the same principle as what you've heard from here. So rein, vollständig rein, Frucht und mehr Frucht. Das because, ist eben dasselbe Prinzip. Because this is the, the former rain, right? Denn das hier ist der um, Frühregen. And then comes here the, the latter rain. Und darin kommt dann das Spätregen. But under the latter rain again, you have this cleansing, right? Aber the unter den rain, Spätregen, du hast wieder diese Reinigung durch den Frühregen. Also früh und spätregen unter den spätregen. Okay. So in John 15. Und in Johannes 15. Uh, we begin in verse 1. Fangen wir in Vers 1 an. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may be, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So same place, right? He says, now you are clean through the word. So okay. Vers 3, es ist derselbe Platz. Er sagt, jetzt seid ihr rein durch das Wort, die ich zu euch gesprochen habe. Yes. And in John 13, we saw that he said, okay, you already are washed, you are already clean. Johannes 13 haben wir bereits gesehen, ihr seid bereits gereinigt, ihr seid rein. Yeah, but he then gives you the foot washing because you still need this special cleansing. Okay. Aber er gibt den Fußwaschung, weil du immer noch ähm, diese besondere Reinigung bedarfst. And here it, it's illustrating this Pruning, right? This purging. Und hier stellt es diese Beschneidung da, also diese Reinigen des Weinstocks. It's like cutting away your yes. foreskin, right? Exactly, yes. Es ist wie eine Beschneidung. Yes, so the foreskin of your heart. Yeah. Das Vorhaut deines Herzens. Okay, so that's basically then this, this 
final test, this final work that he will do for you. Okay. Das ist eben dieses finale Test, diese letzte Werk, die er für dich tun wird. And what must you not do in this time? Resist. Yes. Und du, was solltest du in dieser Zeit nichts tun? Mm. Also du sollst nichts widerstehen. And you must not resist this, because that's no God's work that only he can do, okay? So. You, you just need to allow it to happen. Also du darfst das nicht widerstehen in dieser Zeit, denn dies ist das Werk Gott, die nur er für dich tun kann. Du sollst das eben nur hinnehmen. Okay, but what did Judas do when he washed the feet? Aber was tat Judas, als er seine Füße äh, äh, wusch? Yeah, he resisted, right? Er he resisted this repentance. Hat diese Buße widerstanden. Okay, so, and then let's just continue here in verse 4. Uh, also, we lesen weiter jetzt, in Vers 15, Vers 4 jetzt. It says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. So that's the time uh, when he's now pruning you, and Sister White says uh, that <coughs> this can be painful, okay? <laughs> Das ist die Zeit, wo der Herr dich als Weinstock beschneidet und Ellen White sagt, dass dieser Prozess kann eben eine schmerzvolle sein. And because yourself will die in here. Okay. Weil hierin in dieser Zeit selbst wird sterben. So, but Christ says, in this time, what do you need to do? Aber Christus to sagt, in dieser Zeit, was musst du tun, gemäß Vers 4? You must abide in him. Du musst okay. in ihm bleiben oder weilen. So abide in Christ, and then <coughs> continue in verse 5. Verse 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. So, if you abide, you bring forth much fruit. Right? So, wenn du in ihm weilst, dann bringst du eben viel Frucht hervor. Okay, that's the same principle there, right? Wieder, das ist derselbe Prinzip. It says, um, you cannot be a fruit of yourself, so this is this work that man cannot do for himself. So du kannst Frucht mm -hmm. nicht aus dir selbst hervorbringen, so dieses gleich das Werk, die der Mann oder der Mensch nichts für sich selbst tun kann. Exactly, because he says now in verse 5, Denn er sagt hier in Vers 5, For without me he can do ja, nothing. Ohne mir okay. kannst du nichts tun. So it's Christ's work and this is impossible for you to do. So es ist okay. das Werk Christi und es ist eben unmöglich, dass du dies für dich selbst tun kannst. And it says, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. Verse 6. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burnt. So those that therefore resist this exceeding bright light, this letter ring here. So diejenigen, die dieser äußerst helles Licht, diese Spätregen hier widerstehen. Yeah, they get cast into the fire. Right? Sie werden ins Feuer geworfen. So the tree they get cast into the water. Yes. Das ist wie der Baum, der ins um, Wasser geworfen wird. So, and they, they are now withered. Und sie verdorren. And then verse 7. Vers 7. It says, if you abide in me, my words abide in and you. My words abide in oh, so thank you. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. This is also something we this is look, look crying at. crying out to the Lord yes. and asking him for mercy. Yes. So, dieses, dieses Rufen zum Herrn und Bitten um Erbarmen. Yes. So, <coughs> herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father loved me, so I have, I have loved you, continue ye in my love. And then, he basically goes down to verse 13. Und dann geht er bis Vers 13. Yeah, because now he speaks about the law, right? Uh, jetzt spricht er über diese Liebe. So let's read verse 12 and uh, 13. So die Verse 12 und 13. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man may, uh, that a man lay down his life for his friends. So what is he saying? What do you need to do here? So was sagt er? Was musst du hierin tun? John 4, uh, Luke 14, 26, because it says, yes. if you don't die, for me, and you can't be my disciple. So, 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 so
nicht für mich stirbst, also dein Leben hinlegst, dann kannst du nicht mein Junge werden. Yes. So this is now this, this cross, right? Das ist dieses Kreuz, dieses Kreuz ist erfahren. Wo es selbst da ist. Wo selbst stirbt. Okay, and so just keep your finger here. And let's just go quickly back to. Actually, no. Let's go first to John chapter 12. So, halt die Platz hier und geht zu Johannes 12. Just to see this illustration here, because here he also speaks about the cross in John 12. No, yeah. um diese Darstellung hier zu sehen, denn hier spricht Johannes um, auch über das Kreuz. Christus. Yeah. Yeah. Says. Um, Yes, we will go there, but let's first go to 31 to 33. So the verse 31-33 says, Now is the judgment of this world, now shall the prince of this world be cast out, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. So, and then it says this, he said, signifying what death he should die. So here he speaks about the cross. So right? here spricht er über das Kreuz. And But then it says here in verse 27, Aber hier in den Vers 27, Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. So what is it? So what is this? It's the evil, uh, it's the hour. Yes, this hour. Right? It's the Stunde. And we already marked it many times that this hour is here. Das Hour of Temptation. Right? Das haben wir öfters hier markiert als diese Stunde der Versuch. And uh, let's read also verses 23 to 24. Und auch die Verse 23, 24. Or 25 even. So gab es 25. It says, And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come, that the Son of Man should be glorified. So he speaks about this hour. Also, er spricht über diese Stunde hier. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Much fruit. Okay. Frucht. So that's exactly what we also read in John 15. So this is genau das, was wir in Johannes 15 gelesen haben. So when you receive this pruning, you bring forth much fruit. Und wenn du diese Beschneidung erhältst, dann wirst du viel Frucht hervorbringen. Yes, everybody sees this? Kann jeder das sehen? Okay. So all these things, they speak about the same things all the time. So, all diese Sachen, die sprechen wieder und wieder über dasselbe. Now let's go back to John 13. So, gehen wir jetzt zu Johannes 13. He says, never is my soul troubled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, verse, verse 8. Jetzt Vers 8. Speaking about this foot washing here. So, wieder spricht es hier über die Füßwaschung. Says Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. So, if you don't receive this foot washing, what, is, what does he say? If you don't receive this foot washing, what does he say? No part in her. John 13, verse 8. John 13, verse 8. You have no. Du hast keine. Yeah, no part with him. Kein right? Anteil an ihm. Okay, so and in John 15 we saw, and when we go back to John 15. In Johannes 15 haben wir gesehen, wenn wir jetzt wieder dahin gehen. Uh, and let's read verse 6 again. Vers 6 lesen wir wieder. It says, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burnt. Okay, so they have no part. With him then. So okay, so you don't have by Anteil an ihm, wenn sie nicht in ihm wollen. Yeah, and in the Bible I don't have a verse now at hand, but it says always you have no part with the inheritance. Okay. Und in der Bibel, also ich habe jetzt keinen Vers parat, aber es sagt öfters, dass du hast keinen Anteil an der Erbte. Yes. Yeah, and Christ is our inheritance, right? Yes. Und Christus ist unsere Erbe. No part. In Christ. All right. In 
Hello. Welcome back. So let's go now to the book of Revelation. Uh, sorry, Revelation, First uh, John chapter two. So gehen wir jetzt zu erste Johannesbrief Kapitel 2. First John chapter two. Erste Johannes Kapitel 2. And let's read the verses 18 to 19. Die Verse 18 und 19. Because it says, yeah, if you don't abide in him, uh, you will be separated from him and be cast forth, uh, also, cast out. Wenn right? du nicht in ihm weilst, dann wirst du von ihm getrennt und hinausgeworfen werden. And here it speaks about those that don't abide in Christ. Und hier spricht es über diejenigen, die in Christus nicht weilen. It says, little children. Where are you reading from? 1 John chapter 2, 18 and 19. Also die Verse 18 und 19. 1. Johannes 2, 18 und 19. It says, little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Okay, so they are the ones that don't abide in Christ. So, okay. da hier spricht es über diejenigen, die nicht in Christus fallen. Fallen away. Yeah, they fall das away. Das wegfallen. Yeah. And they are now made manifest that they are Judas. Okay. Um, sie werden manifest gemacht hier, dass sie eben Judas sind. Okay, because they don't receive this special cleansing. Weil okay. sie diese besondere Reinigung hier nicht annehmen. And we understand in the vision uh, by... Sister White about the, the chasm vision. Und wir verstehen in diese Vision von Ellen White, also die Vision über den Kluft. Yeah. They come to this chasm here, right? Sie kommen zu hier an, zu diesem Kluft. And what does she, what does she say? Und was sagt sie hier? <laughs> yeah, but when they come to the chasm. Also wenn sie zum Kluft ankommen. The end of the road, the time of Christ. Yeah, there was nowhere it's no way for them to cross. Only a walk that God can do. The cords will hold us. Yeah, the cords. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. It's that cross. But she says, if we, uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, that's the way. Uh, Therefore, this cleansing is good and fine, okay? So, diese, diese Reinigung hier, die ist zwar gut, uh, but if you don't receive this special work of Christ, this higher cleansing, as the White calls it, uh, everything is for naught. Okay. Wenn du diese besondere Reinigung von Christus nichts erhält, also diese höhere Reinigung, wie Ellen White es nennt, dann alles zuvor, diese Reinigung zuvor war eben für nix. Uh, so basically, uh, because your evil propensities, they will not have been dealt with unless you receive this special work here. Yeah. Weil deine böse Neigungen, sie werden eben nicht vollständig behandelt werden, es sei denn, dass du diese besondere Werk hier drin ähm, erhältst. So it's, uh, it's very clear that uh, the Lord uh, he has a specific plan how to save us. Okay. Es ist sehr klar, dass der Herr eine ganz besondere Plan hat, wie er uns retten mö yeah, äh, möchte. Only by the revelation that he can do so. Und okay. es ist nur durch die Offenbarung, dass er das tun kann. Okay, Margaret. Uh, you said a verse with part of an eloquence. Proverbs 17.2 is one verse. Okay. Also, Sprüche 17.2. Okay. We still want an idea of it. Because we hold in the place of the man. Proverbs 17.2. We'll, we'll see, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Just don't. laughs> Give up a lot here, man. Proverbs 17, 2. Sprüche 17,2. Okay, it says, A wise servant shall have rule over a son that causeth shame, and shall have part of the inheritance among the brethren. Yes, so here's somebody who has part of the inheritance. So here's right. jemand, der Anteil an die Erbe hat. Yes. Okay, so... All right, so let's go now then to Isaiah 6. Okay. So we go now to Isaiah 6. Okay. 
Okay, in verse 1. Vers 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved with the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth, and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Okay, so here we can see yeah, that and what is placed upon his lips at the end? Was is auf seine Lippen am Ende gelegt? Yes, the hot coal, which is the letter. Heiße Kohle, was gleich der Spätregen ist. Place it. I just not hot coal. So heiße Kohle. In, no, in this vision of Isaiah 6 is whose other vision? This vision here in Isaiah 6 is Wessen vision auch noch? Ezekiel. Yes, Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Yes. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 1. So let's go to Ezekiel chapter 1. Because it was this cherubim or the seraphim that took this call, right, and placed it on, der on his lips. Der Lippen it was of the altar, the altar of incense. From the altar, yeah. Okay, um, verse 1. Now it came to pass in the thirtieth year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Sheba, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. So then he saw in verse 5 these four living creatures coming out. And then in verse the, 5. The cloud, or, yes. Okay, and when you jump down now to verse 13, and when we now to verse 13 it says, As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire. And like the appearance of, of lamps, it went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. Okay, so what was their appearance like? So, wie war ihre Ansehen? Hot coals. Yes, like hot coals, uh, burning coals of fire. Brennende uh, coal. Okay, and uh, keep your finger here in Ezekiel 1, let's go to Ezekiel 10. So, halt den Platz hier und geht zu Ezekiel 10. So the, the angel coming down the ladder, the, uh, Jacob saw the angel bringing a hot coal. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So the angel, the Jacob, the leiter herabkommen sieht, wäre ein uh, Engel, der eine heiße Kohle bringt, um seine Lippen zu. Yes. So because it's Gabriel in Revelation chapter one who gives him the revelation, right? This is Gabriel in Offenbarung 1, der Johannes die Offenbarung gibt. And it's also Gabriel in Daniel chapter ten and eleven who gives him the revelation. This is auch Gabriel, der Daniel in Kapitel 10 und 11, der ihm da die Offenbarung gibt. Yeah. So it's it's therefore are the cherubims that bring the latter rain. So okay. Deswegen sind die Cherubim, die der Spätregen bringen. Okay, so let, let's just uh, go to Ezekiel 10. So, Ezekiel 10. And this is what Jacob saw when he saw the ladder, right? The angels ascending and descending, bringing this oil. Und das ist was uh, Jacob, sa Jacob sah, als er den Leiter sah, Engeln, die herauf und herab kamen. Okay, so let's uh, go to Ezekiel 10, verses 1 and... Two. Ezekiel 10, the verses 1 and 2. Then I looked, and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them, as it were, 
a sapphire stone as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. So, do you remember this illustration that we looked at some while ago on the board? Also, can you remember this illustration that we saw a few weeks ago on the table? angezeichnet gehabt haben, die mit den Four Cherubims, yeah, the also and den vier Cherubim mit der Gewölbe und den Ton drüber. Oh, yes, okay. uh, and the, the wheels, and was this movable throne basically. Die Rädern uh, unter den Cherubim, also diese mobile Thron. Yes. But we also saw what what did they also represent. Aber wir haben auch gesehen, was haben sie auch noch dargestellt. Yeah, okay, let's just read verse 2, maybe you will remember. Verse 2, vielleicht erinnern wir uns. It says, And he spake unto the man clothed with linen, and said, Go in between the wheels, even under the cherub, and fill thine hand with coals of fire from between the cherubims, and scatter them over the city. And he went in in my sight. So what was this man to do? So what soll this man do? To go in between the cherubims, to take coals of fire. Zwischen den Cherubim und nimmt brennende Kohle. Yes, and and in Isaiah six, where did we see where was the coal taken from? Und in Isaiah six, wo war diesen Kohle her? Yeah, from the altar, right? Vom Weihrauchsalter. Okay, so the coals are on the altar. So die heißen Kohlen sind auf dem auf dem Altar. So basically, we we studied this some while ago. We saw that these Cherubims. Illustrate also this altar of incense. So we have this for a long time studied that this cherubim on the altar also stands. Okay. So who was speaking with with the man with the linen? That's Christ. Christ. Yes. This is Christ. Yeah. Who is who is Christ? The man with linen clothes, right? I mean, he he's illustrating Christ. I mean, he's not Christ literally, but he's playing the role of Christ. Who? The man and the linen. Okay, but who is speaking with him? The Father. No, I mean, either Christ speaks to him or the Father. Revelation 14, because Revelation 14 has the same illustration. Christ on the cloud and the voice says to him, it's obviously the Father speaking to him. Yes, but I mean, this man is not Christ himself, right? He's just playing the role of Christ. We also studied this some while ago because for instance, in Ezekiel 9, this man sets this seal upon everybody who's crying sign, right? Also in Ezekiel 9, this man, der setzt den Siegel auf jeder, der seufzt und klagt. And it's the same man as here in Ezekiel 10. Es ist derselbe Mensch oder Mann wie hier in Ezekiel 10. But as the White says, it's the angels, it's the cherubims. The White says it's the angels, the cherubims. Yes, and it's the cherubim that place the seal. Of God on the points. So it's a cherubim that the seal of God on the stern is. So, but they represent Christ. But they stand in this case, Christ is there. Okay. Verse seven. The cherub stretches forth his hands and the cherub lifts the fire. Says this in verse seven. Yes. So basically, yes. So we saw these these cherubims. They were like these burning coals, and they. Basically, can give you the burning coals, okay? So we have seen that these cherubim, these are also like burning coals, and they can give you these burning coals. Yeah. So it's basically they can give you the Holy Spirit, right? Because the coals are the latter rain. So they can give you the Holy Spirit, because these coals are the later rain. So, and and therefore, yeah, the the these. It's not just when they touch you, because. Just the way he calls it, the Lord is the final touch. And also Jesus, when he's healing people, he just touches them. Yeah, and also. Oh, Jesus, when a man is healed, he touches him. And Gabriel, he also touched Daniel. And Gabriel had also Daniel touched, and also the young men, as he was healed, had also touched Christ. Basically, that's exactly. So the final touch of Christ. So it's this final touch. This final. Jeremiah says he touched his lips, so it doesn't say with a coal, but he says he touched his lips. So Jeremiah says he touched his lips, so it doesn't say anything about a coal, but he touched his lips. Because it also says, right, if I cast out the demons by the finger of God. So it says also, if I cast the devils by the finger of God. Wen treibt euer Kind das hier aus? So, and we we studied it that the finger of God is obviously the Holy Spirit, but it's also the cherubims that 
bring the Holy Spirit. Wir haben das auch studiert, dass den Finger Gottes ist den Heiligen Geist, aber stellt auch den Cherubim dar, die den Heiligen Geist bringen. Okay. Meine, meine yes, there's two points here. In Jeremiah it says he put forth his hand and touched his lips, right? So Jeremia sagt, es tut seine Hand nach vorne und rührte seine Lippen an. And secondly, in Daniel, it's the burning hand. This hand is like a flame of fire when it's right, because whenever the hand touches the wall, the wall begins to burn. Und in die Geschichte von Belsasar und Daniel, wenn diesen Hand die Wand anrührte, es hat ähm, Buchstaben von Feuer hinterlassen. So showing you that the hand is the coal, it's burning. So der Hand ist der Kohle, der brennt. Amen. Yes. So, so basically, therefore, we can see you know, that this hot coal is in this, this final touch, uh, when you know your iniquity is purged. So deswegen können wir sehen, diese heiße Kohle ist die finale Berührung, wenn deine Übertretung gereinigt ist. Uh, and, and it's these cherubims that come down the ladder that bring this hot coal, they are themselves like hot coals and they can give you this hot coal. Das ist diese Cherubim, die in den Leitern herabkommen, die sind wie diese heiße Kohlen selber und sie können dir diese heiße Kohle geben. And they are basically this finger of God. Okay. Sie sind diese Finger Gottes. Okay, so everybody could follow. Konnte jeder folgen. Mm-hmm. Alright, so then to summarize. Also okay. um zusammenzufassen. Yeah, so we can see uh, there are two works of cleansing. So we can see that there are two works der Reinigung gibt. And so the Lord he begins the temple cleansing. So der Herr fängt den Tempelreinigung an. For eight days. Acht Tage lang. And he brings you to the porch. Und er bringt dich zum Säulenhalle yeah. an. And here, when you come here and you receive this cleansing of the former rain. Und wenn du hier ankommst und diesen Reinigung des Frühregens bereits erhalten hast. Yeah, you are, you are clean. Du bist okay. zwar rein. But this hidden evil has not been dealt with. Okay. Aber diese verborgene Bös- Bösheit, also deine böse Neigungen, sind noch nicht behandelt worden. And therefore he needs to make, give now this higher cleansing, this special cleansing, this foot washing. So deswegen muss er diese höhere Reinigung, höhere Reinigung, diese besondere Reinigung, diese Fußwaschung eben geben. Uh, that you can climb up this ladder of Jacob in order to Into heaven. Okay. So dass du diesen Jakobsleiter hier heraufklimmen kannst, damit du den Himmel hineinkommen kannst. Yeah. And because then you're fully clean and you will bring forth much fruit. Okay. Weil dann bist du vollständig rein und wirst viel Frucht hervorbringen. But only if you abide in this time in Christ. Aber okay. nur wenn du in diese Zeit in Christus bleibst. Yeah, but if you resist this working. Aber wenn du dieses Werk widerstehst. Yeah, you are like a branch severed from the vine. You wither now. Bist du wie ein Ast von der Rebe abgeschnitten und du wirst verdorren. And you are cast into the fire. Und du wirst ins Feuer geworfen werden. And you have no part in the inheritance of Christ. Kein Anteil an der Erbe Christi. Yeah. But if, on the other hand, you remain in Christ, you are these first fruits. Okay. Aber andererseits, wenn du in Christus dort bleibst und weilst, dann wirst du eine von diesen Erstlingsfrüchte sein. And uh, if you partake in this experience here of this higher cleansing. Uh, the Lord he will then give you this hot coal. Und wenn du Anteil nimmst an diesem Werk des höheren Reinigungs, dann der Herr wird dir diesen heiße Kohle geben. Uh, through the cherubims. Durch den Cherubim. And he will give you this final touch. Und that er wird you, dich diesen finale Berührung geben. That you will come out of your grave and you will be living. Dass okay. du aus deinem Grab herauskommst und lebendig wirst. Amen. Everybody follows. Amen. Kann jeder sehen? So. When you are in John, it says, if the seed. Unless the seed falls into the ground and dies, it cannot bring forth much fruit. So we have in Johannes gelesen, es sei denn, dass der Same ins Boden fällt und stirbt, dann kann es nicht viel Frucht hervorbringen. So you mentioned this point that you have to die the self. Yes. Also, du hast diesen Punkt erwähnt, dass hierin es ist das Selbst, was sterben muss. Yeah, but it's represented by the by death because in Revelation 11, this morning, We were shown that this is the three and a half days where the, the two witnesses are dead. So, da stellt aber ein totes Prozess da, denn heute Morgen haben wir gelesen in Offenbarung 11, dass die zwei Zeugen, diese 1260, tot sind. And at the end of it, he says, come up hither, to mm-hmm. heaven. And they mm-hmm. Ende sagt er zu sie, kommt hier herauf, also yes. zum Himmel herauf. So, that's mm-hmm. the point, they the ladder. Right? Also, mm-hmm. sie erklimmen das Leiter gerade da. Yes. Okay, so we can clearly see uh, how the Lord, he needs to do these two cleansing works in order to save us. So we can clearly see how the Lord 
es nötig hat, diese zwei Reinigungswerke zu tun, um uns zu retten. And if you don't receive the revelation and you claim to be already alive, you can know that you're false. Okay. Und wenn du die Offenbarung nicht erhalten hast und behauptest, am Leben zu sein, es ist klar, dass du falsch bist. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, and I just want to also give a testimony to God's honor. Okay. Nur zu Gottes Ehre muss ich ein Zeugnis hier geben. Uh, because uh, I didn't have really anything tonight and just came here by faith. Ich hatte eigentlich gar nichts vorbereitet heute Abend und ich bin nur hier gestanden durch Glaube. And the Lord just opened one thing after another. Und der Herr hat nur eine Sache nach dem anderen aufgetan. Okay. Dann praise God. Ich weiß nicht mehr. Ich close and pray. So lasst uns wirklich beten.